the letter I'm going to continue from Jack Hartsfield, and I've been telling about mind control murders and patterns and about my kidnapping from Buckingham Palace and being given the name of a twin that dropped me off in Molson, Alabama. Jack's wife died about two years ago, I guess now, and uh, anyway, he's paid a price himself, but he, as far as I know, Jack was not just a reporter. I met him at the Huntsville Times when actually they were trying to kill, kill me again um, in the 1st of November of 80, was it 82 or 81? I can't remember. Anyway, I'd have to go back and try to look it up. But uh, Jack saved my life. And then later I found out that my aunt, uh, that I'd been kidnapped and um, brought to this country from Buckingham Palace, given the name of a twin, Peggy and Dempsey, married Childers. Both twins were murdered by their mother, Lina, Molten, Alabama. It was a pigsty. Now I take up the video trying to tell it, so I'm going to go and read part of Jack's letter. Uh, so you and I, this is where he said they've uh, tried to uh, make me, <laughs> everybody knows uh, the truth, though. He says here, uh, spending time trying to organize, and Ken, after all, I wonder if I'd be able to even uh, live this morning when I woke up. Um well, I can't see it now. He was talking about what they've done to me to try to discredit me and everything. But um, after all, the guts of the U.S. space program, the home of anti-ballistic missile research project, the location where every Army tactical missile system fell anywhere in the free world was managed, registered on Arsenal Huntsville, NASA, and that's close to where they left me at Moulton. And there's connections. Um, and where J. Edgar Hoover's FBI Division 5, a super secret police agency, has operated since the early 40s. In fact, it was so sensitive that it didn't exist. With links to Daytona, uh, Dayton, Ohio, Washington, D.C., New Orleans, and sometimes the cloak of national security, I'm skipping in the letter here, this page 3, can seriously be abused. Not to protect the nation's secret, but to hide and bury blunders and blurry conspiracies. So he talks about John Kennedy shooting. John Kennedy's father was ambassador and helped kidnap me to England and bring me to this country and take my father, King Edward VIII, down. So I'm legal heir to the British Crown. And Kennedy's shooting was covered up because the links back to my kidnapping. Now then, this is... Um, some more of Jack's uh, letter, page three. Um, one such way was through a program called MK Ultra, a mind control, mind altering um, research project, which the Central Intelligence Agency at the time had been dabbling in for years. Targets were sometimes given LSD, manipulating chemicals and the intent to destabilize. Often the targets never knew it. And uh, still another program tied to research effort called Psychotronics in the United States and formerly called Psychotectronics uh, by the later defunct Soviet Union. Low frequencies in some cases, it's called brain wave entrainment. I knew about this part he's talking about before I got this letter a long time before. Um, and they used to electronically plant concepts and ideas in humans' minds. That's modifying behavior, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the concept can implant fear, lethargy, manic moods, even deep depression, unexplained paranoia. A gentleman named Nikolai Tesla, okay, now that's where you need to go for some of this, where they can cure illnesses, the mind control, it was stolen by the FBI, early 1930s. So anyway, I'm just going to go on uh, and read some of this. I can't put it all on here. It may come as a surprise to you, but I did share a lot of this with Larry Flint last year. I, um, so I'd already been out and met Flint at that time. 
during the campaign, uh, at quiet moments I try to make a grounded assessment of all the above. If the dastardly events above, particularly as related to FBI's Division 5, assorted shenanigans were public, it would, what would be the results? It could perhaps be very destabilizing for the nation as a whole. The Huntsville experiments, the agony of 63, well, you know, I've heard them because tomorrow's the day that John Kennedy was shot. That bastard and his parents, what they did to me and to the British, I mean, I hope it's told. And people who totally know about me could care less. They still, even though this man kidnapped and the murders that he helped commit, um, his father and he helped kidnap me. He was... Uh, ambassador to England at the time and take down my father. So, uh, oh, and here's where he says this, because you don't tell the Americans what they're doing. Um, you know, their identity is they come in and save you and help you, which is a total lie. I recall being told once of an individual who uh, referred to me in Huntsville this way, the last thing we need is some red-blooded, all-American boy waving the flag and calling it like it is. Still, I keep crying. Go from one crazy to another. Thanks for carrying Jack. Well, nobody was crazy. They tried to make it look that way, and I'm probably getting my letters messed up here. But I'm going to go on to another one and uh, read just pieces out of it that Jack, because I've told all this myself and it hasn't done me any good. In fact, I'm wondering if I'm going to live here. Uh, this was back in 26, and the only thing here is he's mentioning Bulldog Daniel, which was a murderer. He was kin to the sheriff in Huntsville, and the sheriff did a, well, anyway, when they were trying to kill me, <laughs> using the law, how's that? Jack stood there defending, he's a reporter, and that's what saved me. L let me say this. And they didn't want to, his own brother didn't want to hear about it because his job would be at, at stake. He's sitting there with handcuffs on me and Jack telling, saying, hey, she knows who murdered your brother, okay? And he knew Jack and he knew he was telling the truth. Anyway, I uh, guess I read that. I'm going to have them all messed up here in a minute and can't put it back together. Um, this is one that Jack, wrote to me a long time ago. What you never forget, Peggy, is that my name is really Margaret Ann Windsor, but hey, is that while you thought you were walking along, you weren't. The time will come, I promise you, that people will wish they had listened to you. It's not too unlike one of the latest nonfiction books, Marie, the little girl, the little lady in Nashville who blew the whistle on Blanton and took down the entire state administration. You ask about my situation at the Huntsville Times. Of course, he was a fed too, but um, editor Pat McCauley. You should see what they did to me, McCauley, when I went to them with this after having brain in antifreeze and everything and working for the DA there. How's that? The, the Times, Huntsville Times, wasn't interested at all in any of the situations I was pursuing, especially helping me. Uh, when I continued to pursue the truth, they isolated me in one corner of an office, contending that anything um, I chose to become interested in was on someone else's beat. When I still continued to try to perform as an honest and ethical reporter, Macaulay informed me that I should be more concerned about my wife than asking. Okay, I did, uh, I'm just going to go on. He ended up divorced, and his wife died under. Well, anyway. Uh, so, anyway, he had to leave. And they blacklisted him. And by the way, he tells me here in this letter, I'm just, I can't uh, read it off, that they ended up, they didn't believe me about mind control and heart attacks killing you with heart